I know one of the uh, girl development members in Philadelphia. She is actually, um, you know, a huge, um, you know, supporter of um, the, the, the the diversity um, or, or the birth lottery. So she's um, uh, like her idea is that you know uh, having this opportunity to move to the United States is just change the life of her family and now she runs a successful company. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening whenever you may be listening and welcome to Latitude, the 43 North podcast. I'm your host, digital media manager here at 43 North, Nate Benson, episode 51. Thank God we're moving up. This week on the podcast, we have the founder of Girl Develop at Buffalo, Lena Levine, and she's here to talk about Girl Develop at Buffalo, women in tech, and all things related to to that topic. But before we jump into that, I just want to remind you, depending on when you listen to this, it could be past March 28th, so if it's past March 28th, disregard what I'm about to say, but if it's before March 28th, 2018, make sure you head on over to 43 North's website or social media channels and register for the live edition of the podcast, Latitude Live, March 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. here at the 43 North Incubator, 640 Ellicott Street, downtown Buffalo. We have Iba Masood, the founder of Terra AI, the 2017 40th North winner, one of the winners, I should say. It's going to be a great live event. We have food from Expo, beer from Flying Bison. Citizens Bank is helping us out and promoting the event and getting people here, and there's limited space. So head on over to all of our social media channels and reserve your tickets now. And if you use Eventbrite, head on over to Eventbrite, search 43 North, and you'll find our event on March 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. here at the Incubator. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fantastic night, and I've got brand new bad jokes for that evening, and I know you're looking forward to that. Anyway, this week on the podcast, like I said, Lena Levine, Girl Develop at Buffalo, we're talking about women in tech, working with international teams, and who knows? You're going to have to listen to find out, so I'm going to let you listen right now. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Thanks for having me here today. As we start every episode, give us the quick pitch of who you are and what you do. All right, um, the coffee shop pitch. So uh, my name is Lena Levine, and uh, I'm the founder um, of uh, the chapter of Girl Develop at uh, Buffalo, and uh, I also um, founder and the owner of uh, Lena Levine Studio, where web design and mobile app devel- uh, development studio located here at the Innovation Center. Uh, spoiler alert: <laughs> you have a, you have an accent. So where, what's your journey to Buffalo? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I moved to Buffalo uh, in 2009 uh, from Russia, and uh, I've been living here ever since, so Buffalo is my second home now. I'm a uh, big, big fan of, uh, uh, of Buffalo, of the city, of the community, and uh, I'm really happy that I can be part of the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the resurgence that's going on. How did you, what was the journey from Russia to Buffalo? Why come to Buffalo? Uh, why leave Russia? So um, I moved to Buffalo right after I graduated university, and um, I always, I don't know, so I, growing up, I always loved speaking English, like English was my favorite subject in school, and uh, I saw, I always envisioned myself living in the English-speaking country, and um, I always felt like I had more ambition that I could apply in my hometown, and um, I visited uh, Buffalo and Niagara Falls in 2008. I was an exchange, uh, exchange student here while working during the summer, and uh, I really liked the area. Um, also, um, in addition, you know, uh, because uh, Canada is so close as well, so you kind of get the you know two two countries, uh, you know, for the price of one, for the price <laughs> of one, right? And uh, I just thought it was a great uh, you know place to live, great opportunities, and. Um, I decided to come back uh, in 2009 after I graduated, and uh, I thought it was one of the best decisions in my life. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. So when you were at university, uh, was tech uh, your your main kind of uh, subject? Yeah, yeah. I have a master's in computer science. I don't. So <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the brains in the room. Um, so computer science, uh, you, you came in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what happened in 2009? What did you do here? So I uh, actually went uh, back uh, back to college here. I got um, a degree in digital media, and uh, just just a, a short degree, kind of get you know accustomed, uh, get into the you know get into the uh, get, get used to the American culture, and just you know uh, it, it was my dream always to uh, to go study in the American college. You know, you when you grow up, you see all these things in the movies, and it's just like so fascinating. So experience yeah. it was like one of the one of the dreams of mine, and. Uh, 
yeah, I, I, I had a lot of fun. And uh, after I graduated, I, um, I was working uh, for a short period of time. I was working for Yahoo Data Center in Lockport. And uh, I found that the corporate culture was not a great fit for me. Uh, and uh, I traded that job for um, the smaller job at the web design studio in Niagara Falls. And uh, after a couple of years of working there, unfortunately, that small business went bankrupt. And that's how I found myself uh, freelancing. And it's just one thing led to another where I um, started my own business. Do it yourself, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Girl Develop at Buffalo, uh, for those who don't know, what is Girl Develop It? So Girl Develop It uh, is a national organization. Uh, it was founded in New York City by two women uh, web developers. And uh, we are now up to uh, 50 chapters across the United States. Uh, Buffalo, uh, this year Buffalo is celebrating, celebrating its uh, fifth year anniversary. And um, we, um, so the goal of, uh, of the organization is to promote um, women, uh, technology, uh, technology to women and provide uh, opportunity to learn uh, web development coding through affordable classes, mentorship, hands-on instructions, and just really to build the community of women that, uh, you know, the, the community that's welcoming, supportive. We honestly, we uh, welcome anyone who's interested in learning how to code. So in our classes that we offer, we have uh, guys taking classes, guys teaching classes or TAing. So we're really all-inclusive organization um, with a focus of, uh, on women. Now, why would we want women to code? I mean, they can't possibly do that, no, right? No, don't say that. <laughs> no, I'm being sarcastic, of course. Yes, for those yes. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's all about the diversity, right? The more um, you know, people we have in the room, the more people of different backgrounds that we have, the more. Uh, the, the the better ideas we can come up with, and uh, the the study shows, you know, th there is official data confirming that that the more diversity you have, um, you know, d diverse teams produce better results. Companies that have diverse teams, they um, you know, produce higher profits. You know, um, so when we limit ourselves to a certain uh, to how we view the world, um, it it limits the the result that we can output. So. Um, bringing more women into the um, tech roles in the companies would help companies to evolve mm -hmm. in a uh, much better way that's um, encompassing, you know, perspective of different. If you have a narrow people. path, you're going to have yeah. narrow results, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, plus, in, in you know, computer science history, women have achieved remarkable things. World Absolutely. War II, during yeah. the heyday of NASA, I mean, it was women, really, who kind of laid that foundation. And then the bros took it over in the 70s and 80s <laughs> and 90s, and now and, and here we are. <laughs> um, so what are some of the things Girls Develop it, uh, it does uh, in terms of curriculum for, for, for everybody? Yeah, yeah. So we are, m most of our focus is on the um, beginner students. Um, what, what we find, you know, people don't oh, very often they don't know where to go to to start learning about coding. There are, uh, of course, there are traditional uh, paths like universities, uh, but a lot of times, you know, p people don't want to either commit to you know four-year degree or they might not know if that's the right fit for them. Or they might uh, learn it quicker on their own. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And for that, you can always take online courses. Uh, but the challenge with online courses, you don't have a community to keep you accountable and help you um, get over the hump when you get stuck yeah. trying to um, solve the solve the problem. So uh, Girl Develop It offers uh, affordable classes in the classroom environment. Um, so, And we, we teach anything from HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, PHP, WordPress. Um, so Buffalo Chapter, we're working on bringing mobile app development classes at the moment as well. Um, what else have we offered? Ruby on Rails. So really... Um, a little bit of everything. Yeah, like a that. little bit of everything. Uh, if you go to um, uh, n national website, girldeveloper.com, there is a uh, link to the materials section, and you can see the list of like all the classes that are offered across the different chapters. Where are you guys offering, or where are you hosting these classes at? So great question. <laughs> uh, we love to collaborate with uh, local companies, organizations, and um, a lot of times we partner up with uh, those companies, and they let us to use their office space um, to to host the classes. And it's um, you know it's a win-win uh, partnership. So we you know we, we get to have a classroom space, and our members also get to uh, to see great local companies uh, in the area. Uh, we've been um, yeah we've been kind of all over the place, downtown suburbs, 
uh, near uh, UB. So really trying to accommodate different uh, groups of students, make it convenient for everybody. What age groups are you really targeting? Is it you know high school, middle school, even younger? So we're we're actually eighteen plus. Okay. So we are working with adults and. Um, our the, the the students that come to our classes are really uh, come from the different backgrounds. We have uh, students that are in college and they um, you know want to get extra you know extra experience before they you know get into the workforce. We have women that are currently in the um, you know working their careers and maybe they have a website that all of a sudden you know their boss just dropped on their lap and told them hey you have to manage it now so now they're trying to <laughs> to learn HTML and CSS to figure out how to manage it and uh, we have women in the um, code adjacent careers like project managers designers marketers so they trying to you know maybe they want to understand the lingo maybe they want to even learn about you know learn how to code because you know more and more, like uh, having the um, multiple you know skill sets is extremely extreme uh, extremely valuable yeah. and if you you know if you know how to design and code I mean you are you know um, companies want to want to hire you and um, it's kind of like most industries industries now I mean I came from TV and you know you just don't edit and, and get a TV job anymore you have to edit write produce yes. direct you know yes. and all this thing and I think most industries excuse me industries are going that route just you know because of technology because Absolutely. of efficiencies things like that yeah. the more versatile you are in almost any career path I think the better you're going to be Absolutely and having that uh, understanding of the code helps designers to design better websites or better products just because they understand how the you know the, the behind the scenes work and uh, I mean that's just extremely valuable and uh, helps to again improve the efficiency improve the processes mm -hmm. what success stories have you had from uh, girl development locally oh man uh, a lot of success stories I mean we have um, one of our members um, sh uh, she started her um, well sh she w so the success stories um, uh, besides teaching how to code, uh, mm -hmm. we also like to, um, oh, like our goal is to connect our members with, you know, local companies, just like local tech events, like really facilitate the engagement of women uh, in tech community. So one of our uh, members, uh, we, um, I told her about the startup weekend and mm -hmm. she went and she kind of like worked on her project there. She didn't win, but that the idea of the startup, uh, you know, she continued developing and working and like w working with her team. And uh, th that idea, you know, ended up evolving into something else. And uh, she actually took it to San Francisco. And uh, so unfortunately, she ended up moving from Buffalo, <laughs> but she moved to San Francisco and uh, she still works on her company that, you know, wow. was originated in Buffalo Startup Weekend. And uh, it's just like amazing that, you know, if we didn't make this connection. I, you know, she might have been working some corporate job mm -hmm. right now or something uh, that, you know, sh she wouldn't be uh, happy with. But uh, um, another, um, uh, other success stories, I mean, we, uh, we see more and more companies uh, in Buffalo, you know, hiring uh, or, S recognizing uh, girl develop it, um, you know, credentials on the uh, student uh, mm -hmm. or the candidates' resumes, and they, you know, see those, you know, um, as favorable. Uh, we, I know that um, liaison. They've been hiring a lot of women in tech recently, and uh, actually, a few few of our members work on uh, liaison teams. So, um, yeah, just like really helping helping our members to, um, you know, excel at their careers and uh, offer those. Uh, or connect one with the w with better uh, better um, job opportunities and provide those skills that would help them to to land those job opportunities. So it seems like you're getting a little bit of a track record of, of success of people kind of graduating out of the, of the yeah. program and, and finding real world work. Yeah, 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 That's great. definitely. You mentioned uh, the phrase "women in tech" a few times in that in that answer. So let's kind of pivot towards women in tech. It's such uh, a vital conversation happening now in, in even mainstream media. Uh, women in tech. Um, so I guess I'll kind of lob the overarching question of what are some of the issues facing women in tech in 2018? Oh man, great question. Um, so I think same ones as in 2017 and uh, and earlier. Um, we definitely see more companies um, getting on board with you know hiring more women 
in tech uh, or like w we went into the uh, development positions, but um, what we're not seeing or you know what um, people don't often talk about is that the um, kind of like the, the drop off rate of women you know leaving those jobs afterwards is actually pretty pretty high uh, because companies uh, even though they hire more women but they don't uh, f facilitate that the environment that would help women to stay and you know continue their um, growth within the company whether it's um, you know on like unhealthy work environment you know some you know s there are cases where you know like managers don't you know like treat the employees with respect or sometimes companies not offering the um, career development opportunities uh, mentorship I mean all those things uh, I mean it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman uh, I mean they all you know help to create a you know happy mm -hmm. happy work environment you know the, a lot of people who uh, look like me, except older and grayer, will say, well, we just hire the best person for the job. Why is that a wrong mentality? And why should companies actively seek out a diverse, you know, women, a minority, you know, all across the board kind of workforce? Absolutely. I mean, um, hiring, you know, best person for the job is, uh, you know, um, yeah, I I as you said, kind of like the old, uh, old school uh, way of doing things. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, people, you know, you they have the potential, right? They they're learning, they're working hard, but they might not be there yet. So hiring, you know, men, women at those, you know, positions like the junior positions, and then mentoring and help them like shape shape them into the role that you know is perfect for your company and uh, uh, provide the you know uh, skills, uh, the education, and the tool set to to help them grow on the job. That's uh, you know tremendous, um, you know. Tremendous way to develop that workforce and um, be, uh, you know in increase increase the um, number of women in the tech field and uh, um, you know hopefully more and more companies would recognize it as an opportunity um, you know not a not a uh, not a loss. You know <clears throat> everyone's focusing you know so much on you know creating a, a workforce that is diverse with women you know that coupled with. Uh, you know, corporate culture, company culture, you know, the Me Too movement, there's so much happening. And, you know, people sometimes say, oh, just uh, we, why do we have to have these conversations every single day? Mm -hmm. You're beating us to death. But, you know, why is it so important to, you know, be honest and have those conversations and, you know, really try to make a fundamental change from the culture standpoint? Absolutely. Um, I mean, if we, you know, if we don't have those conversations, then, um, you know, who will? Uh, and you know th those are very, you know those are legit issues that um, you know women minorities, um, uh, you know dealing with. And um, you know starting conversation is really a step one, right? Making people aware what's what's happening because a lot of times you know uh, you know men are not aware of the issues or you know challenges that women face in and you know we all come in from different you know socioeconomic backgrounds. You know everybody you know my life is different from mm -hmm. somebody else's life, you know, who maybe like lived in the United States all their life and me, you know, uh, compared to someone who moved here uh, from different countries. So having those conversations, just like really opening the door and, uh, you know, trying to take a peek at somebody else's life. And um, if we can work together, you know, men and women and changing this, changing this together, that um, just would help to, you know, Improve lives for every of you know of, of everybody. The the work environment, the company's growth, the you know e economic um, status, uh, you know the well being of of people. You know, uh, immigration. Yeah. You know, and in entrepreneurism, um, you came here in 2009 from Russia, um, so you kind of fall in that category of a uh, immigrant um, entrepreneur. Absolutely. Uh, what is that? How has that experience been? Uh, oh man, it's, it's been a wild ride. Um, honestly, I think moving to the different country made me an entrepreneur. I, I'm, I'm coming from the uh, engineering family, so my parents, my brother, we all have engineering degrees, just different different fields. And um, before moving to the U.S., I thought I'll get um, you know engineering job. I'm just going to be like my parents, and uh, having. Um, you know, co coming to the different country, just um, I had to deal with a lot of challenges, right? And um, trying to uh, 
work my way uh, to the top, sort of say, just without without knowing anybody, without any connections, just really. Um, and um, what are those what have those challenges been? Oh man, uh, trying to make money to pay for my uh, school tuition, to pay rent, to uh, um, just uh, yeah, trying to figure out even what um, what my next steps are. Mm -hmm. um, would I be able to land a job after the college? Mm -hmm. What job is it going to be? Would I stay? Would it like would I, would I be able to stay in the same area, or should I move somewhere else? Uh, I mean, I've been thinking about moving to the bigger city, uh, or like even like San Francisco, New York. Just you know, thinking that there are more opportunities there, and um, I'm really glad that I stayed in Buffalo and uh, started started you know instead of looking for opportunities I actually started you know building creating, opportun own, creating yeah. my own creating opportunities for others yeah do you think um, do you think you've ever been passed over for opportunities because you're an immigrant or is that not necessarily the case because you're so versed in your field yeah I never I never felt that you know people look at me differently because I'm an immigrant um, I see it um, I actually, you know, for, for myself, I see it as an advantage being an immigrant. I came, you know, to this country being hungry, ready to, you know, work extremely hard. And uh, I think people, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, people value that um, attitude. And um, I really been, you know, grateful to meet a lot of amazing people, you know, in, in Buffalo Tech community, in uh, just, you know, in, in, in Buffalo, in this, in, in Western New York area uh, that, were you know extremely supportive and um, um, yeah I yeah I'm th th that's uh, th that's why I'm such a big you know big fan of Buffalo is just people are amazing and uh, I felt like I wanted to give back to the community and like do something for the city and for you know for people and that's where um, you know my idea for starting mm -hmm. girl development chapter came I'm, from. I'm sure there are people out there who you know are guarded against, you know, or, or discriminatory against immigrants, but yeah. you don't necessarily hear the horror stories like you do in other cities right. here in Buffalo. At least yeah. that's from my experience. Is that, yeah. do you feel the same? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I feel like Buffalo is really trying to, um, it is a very welcoming city for people from different different countries and uh, even, um, you know, Weedy Buffalo and the International Institute, they work hard to make um, refugees um, welcome to create opportunities for those families. So it's um, people, b because we're such a like tight-knit community, I feel like people, um, you know, you, you don't want to be a jerk in Buffalo because everybody would you know. You know everybody. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, uh, Plus, you get farther in life being nice. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you on this one. Given the... Uh, kind of the way politics have changed, uh, even in, since your time mm -hmm. being here. You know, you came you came here two thousand nine. Barack mm -hmm. Obama had just been president. We don't like. To, I don't get too political on the show, but the political climate has changed right. uh, in in ten years or so. Um, any concerns being an immigrant entrepreneur? Do you have concerns for other immigrant entrepreneurs? Do you do you do you feel like kind of the the focus is on kind of your demographic, maybe unfairly? Yeah, I mean that's uh, the, the the that's a very um, hot topic um immigration and uh i mean i know people that uh were able you know that were refugees uh and you know were able to come to the united states and that you know literally changed you know cha changed their life 180 degrees and um i know one of the uh, girl development members in philadelphia she's actually um you know a huge um you know, supporter of um, the, the, the diversity um, or, or the birth lottery. So she's, um, uh, like, her idea is that, you know, um, having this opportunity is to, sh she's coming from uh, Middle East, so, like, mm -hmm. the, the, the war zone. And, you know, having this opportunity to, to move to the United States, you just change the life of her family. And now she runs a successful company. And if, you know, if they haven't had that opportunity, if United States wouldn't give them that opportunity, you know, they don't know they would be now. So, I mean, it's a very, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I have, you know, I don't see myself qualified to uh, kind of go in depth talking about the politics, but um, h having, you know, um, h having those opportunities for people to, uh, you know, find refuge in, you know, in this country and, uh, you know, continue, continue um, or, give them ability to improve their lives and just like give them like a second chance. I think that's, you know, that, that that's why this country exists, right? We, it's founded by immigrants and um, 
provide it, you know, um, uh, <laughs> um, let's see. So, yeah, just um, like giving, giving people ability to um, build something, um, to uh, Im implement the vision, right? I had a vision for what I wanted to achieve in my life, and um, you know, United States was the had the the, the most um, uh, you know fr fruitful fruitful uh, soil for that. And I'm you know I'm grateful that I have uh, this opportunity um, you know to be here today as well. Um, it's kind of wrapping things up. You know, uh, give us a little rundown of of your studio. Mm -hmm. um, you have a team across Europe as well too, yes, right? Yes. Yes. So working you know cross continent is always fun. I, I imagine. Oh my right? God! Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we're an international agency. Um, I have uh, a team here in Buffalo and I have a team in Europe and uh, we're literally working 24-7 around the clock for our customers. Um, I, um, so I'm coming from the web development background and uh, um, you know, it, it just my, my freelancing career kind of organically grew into starting starting the business because I was getting more work than I could handle and um, now we're a team of 10 and uh, we do the uh, web development, custom uh, custom websites, um, custom uh, web applications, mobile app development. Um, also starting to tap into the VR, which is a fun. That's a fun space. Uh, yeah, fun space. There are, I see a lot of opportunities there, even uh, anywhere from education, healthcare, even to some um, like residential. Like um, th there is a home show going on now, and I saw a few uh, like um, uh, interior design, mm -hmm. like VR VR projects there. So it was. Uh, very cool to uh, to check them out. So I went down the rabbit hole of web AR the other oh. day, and I was like, "Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff." Even with augmented reality. Yes. Happening. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, augmented reality is still going strong. So um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities there for engaging, for, like for companies engaging their customers, and uh, um, same with the VR. So that's um, I see that field is continue continue developing. How difficult is it working, you know, with remote teams, especially, you know, completely different continents and, you know, there might be language barriers too and culture barriers. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the kind of uh, pros and cons of something like that? Absolutely. Um, there are, uh, definitely there are, you know, the, the their own challenges working with the, um, you know, uh, remote team and in-house team. Uh, one thing, I would say the biggest thing anyone who's looking to work with a remote team uh, or even f freelancers, um, your processes have to be just like crystal clear. Because mm -hmm. um, the you know a lot of times you're dealing with a time difference, right? And um, teams don't always have, uh, you know, maybe opportunity to resolve certain, uh, you know, challenges, questions in the, um, at the, like in the real time, so your processes have to be uh, completely outlined and streamlined, and uh, you know even better if you're working with somebody in house, just to make sure that um, your remote team has that the backbone, the foundation to handle things while you might not be available if it's you know different time zone situations. So, so really having those operations like down cold and like yes. you know we meet every day at X time across you know, the world you know just to, to yeah. kind of get on the same page yeah. things like that right yeah yeah so and me, me being a very detail pers uh, detail oriented person um, so I you know I see those like for me it's not a challenge because I see those you know. Um, holes in the process I uh, processes I identify them and you know like we improve uh, constantly so like for me being uh, like good at project management and uh, managing uh, um, you know people I I it really works for me I can tell it's not for everybody um, but um, it works for me and what I like like about um, you know I mean technology you know makes things so much easier these days and uh, uh, connecting with uh, you know, bringing talented developers on board that might not be, you know, near you in mm -hmm. your, you know, hometown, but you can literally work with anyone in the world, right? And find the people that, uh, you know, are best fit for your customers, for your projects. I think that opportunity is immense. So, um, yeah. Well, Lena, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast. Uh, if people want to learn more about your studio, uh, learn more about you, how can they do it? Uh, so they can go to our, uh, to our website, lenalevinestudio.com, and uh, learn more.
Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll yeah. catch up with you down the road. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. I want to thank Lena for joining me on the podcast this week. Uh, to learn more about Girl Develop at Buffalo, just head on over to their website. I think they have a great mission. I think uh, the more women involved in tech, I think the better the tech scene will be, not only here in Buffalo, but around the world. Just one more reminder, March 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. here at the 43 North Incubator, 640 Ellicott Street, downtown Buffalo. It's Latitude Live, a live edition of our podcast featuring 2017 43 North winner Iba Masood. She co-founded Terra AI, an AI company. What do they do? I don't know. You'll have to find out on March 28th, 6 to 8 p.m. Head on over to Eventbrite, search 43 North, and you'll find our event. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it, and I've got a whole lot to share with you, but I'm going to have to do that on March 28th. And if you're listening to this podcast after March 28th, wasn't it a great episode of our podcast? Oh, it was just amazing. It was incredible. The host was great. The guest was great. The audience was great. And if you were there, you would think it's great. Anyway, you know what to do. And hey, since I'm asking, head on over to iTunes, leave a five-star review. We've got quite a few, actually, so at least a dozen people seem to enjoy the podcast. So thank you very much. I'm Nate Benson for 43 North. Thank you so much for listening. We truly appreciate it, and I'll see you at the next one. If you're still listening, I recorded the intro and outro to this episode with two hours of sleep. I was on the road for 43 North and only got two hours, and then came home to Buffalo to get more work done. So please forgive me.